New comic book day is almost here again, so it's time to take a look at the books on my pull list. Welcome back to Comics Are Dope. I'm BJ Kicks, and this is The Pull List. It's my weekly video series where I take a look at the books coming up this upcoming new comic book day, February 21st. Uh, I'm going to tell you which books are on the pull list, what's on the chopping block, and what's on the maybe list, things that I'm on the fence about or possibly should be on your radar, even if they're not on mine. Now, I'd like to start these off with the book that I am most excited for, but before I do, Got to give you a quick announcement just in case you have not heard. Marvel and DC decided they could uh, put their differences aside for a second and reprint almost all of their crossover comic appearances. Now, lucky for me, I own all of them in single issues. Maybe unlucky for me since I probably overpaid, but you can grab almost everything Marvel and DC have done together in two oversized hardcover omnibus editions. Uh, right now you can pre-order them for about $90 each if you go to our channel sponsor Organic Priced Books and use my code BJKicks at checkout for $2 off your purchase. Now, those are pretty exciting. I'm doing a separate video about all the crossovers, what my recommendations are, what my favorites of them are. So if you can only grab one of the omnibus, then, you know, you'll have my recommendation as to which one of those you should grab. But that's a separate video. And that's why all this stuff is laid out on my desk. But let's get into the books that are coming out this coming up week, not crossovers from 30 years ago. Now, the book that I am most excited about this week from Marvel Comics is Ultimate Spider-Man issue number two. Ultimate Spider-Man, written by Jonathan Hickman, with art by Marco Kiketo. This book was dope. Issue one kind of broke the internet, definitely broke the direct market for a second. It sold out everywhere. It caused Ultimate Black Panther to sell out everywhere. And now we get to see if issue two is going to live up to all the hype set by issue number one. Now, the one complaint that I saw about issue number one of Ultimate Spider-Man by Hickman is that like, yeah, cool. It subverted all our expectations. The art was beautiful, but it was kind of lacking in the action department. Well, my assumption is that with, you know, Spider-Man sort of becoming Spider-Man, it's kind of the only way I can say that without spoiling, but with him sort of becoming Spider-Man on the last page of issue one, I'm expecting that we're going to see some action in issue two. The only thing that I'm kind of curious about is, what does this costume look like? Because I've seen images of one costume, but we're getting images of a different costume on the cover. When are we getting the classic costume? Are we? I don't know. That's what I'm curious about. But I really, really loved issue one. I loved who's alive and who's not. I love uh, just the dynamics and relationships. And, you know, the fact that we're getting an older Spider-Man with a family. I think there's a lot here that can be really exciting. So, hey. Definitely checking it out. Definitely excited for Ultimate Spider-Man issue number two. Cover price on this one is $4.99. I'm grabbing cover A. Now, the next book on the Marvel Comics poll list is Rise of the Powers of Ten, issue number two. Now, Fall of the House of X, Rise of the Powers of Ten. It's a monthly event. We got Fall of the House of X last week, issue number two. And this week, we're getting Rise of the Powers of Ten. So, in the fall of the House of X, it's all about like sort of what's happening in present day in the powers of 10, uh, much like the original powers of 10. We're getting sort of time traveling adventures. And what we found in the last issue was that the big plan is to uh, incapacitate Moira before her powers manifest on her 13th birthday. So let's see if they're successful. Uh, issue two out this week with a cover price of $4.99. That's cover A. I'm not grabbing cover A. Instead, I'm grabbing this. I think it's the cover C, Connecting Variant by Giuseppe Comancoli. Uh, it connects with the Fall of the House of X issue number two from last week. So dope stuff. But that's the cover I'm grabbing with a price of $4.99. And the last book on the Marvel Comics pull list is another X book. We're looking at X-Force issue number 49. X-Force written by Benjamin Percy. As far as I know... This is the penultimate issue of X-Force. They haven't officially announced that issue 50 is the last issue, but it would make sense for issue 50 to be the last issue. We're getting the end of the Target Beast storyline, which honestly is the last storyline or the last sort of open plot thread that we've had 
from the last 50 issues of X-Force and almost 50 issues of Wolverine. It just makes sense for them both to end at issue 50, which is coming up pretty soon for Wolverine as well. But I don't know. Maybe we're not getting the end at issue 50. Uh, either way, this is the second part of the Target Beast storyline. Beast has to answer for all his crimes. So however that's going to happen, it's not going to happen in issue 49. It's going to happen in issue 50, ultimately. But you need this before you can get that. Cover price on this is $3.99. I'm grabbing cover A. And that's it for the Marvel Comics on the pull list. As long as I stick to the list and don't buy anything extra, my Marvel books are going to cost me $14 this week. Not a bad total, but let's move over to the Distinguished Competition and see what they've got going on, where it's a fairly heavy week there for me as well. First up, though, is Batman issue 144. Uh, this, written by Chip Zdarsky, art by Giuseppe Comancoli with Andrea Sorrentino, is the finale of the Joker year one storyline. And like I said, I wasn't crazy excited about another Joker focused storyline, but at the end of that whole mind bomb arc, you kind of dovetail into this and we're trying to figure out what Joker's involvement with the whole Batman of Zuranar and failsafe and all that is. And the way Zadarsky has tied those threads together, really interesting. Joker has his roots in some of the same things that Batman is earliest rooted in. It's probably a better way for me to say that. But the point is the parallels between Joker's origin or Joker's early years and Batman's early years were really, really cool. Um, by the way, Andrea Sorrentino, he doesn't do like a ton of pages, but the pages he does are like insanely good and creepy. It's like Dave McKean on Arkham Asylum, but like even a little bit less abstract, but still just as like creepy and like sort of, I don't know. I was going to say disarming. Disarming isn't the word. Unnerving. That's the word. Anyway, really, really well done. I like the art. I like where the story's going. And this Chip Zdarsky run on Batman is not disappointed. Cover price on this is for, yeah, $4.99. I'm grabbing cover A. And the next book on the DC Comics poll list this week is Green Lantern War Journal, issue number six. This is the end of the first story arc in Green Lantern War Journal. We've seen John going up against the forces of the Revenant Queen. And now, you know, the battle is the battle. He's got to fight the Revenant Queen. He's got to tap, tap into all of those sort of guardian and builder powers that, you know, we now know he has, even if he's been reluctant to use them, it's going to take everything he's got to beat the Revenant Queen. This series has been great so far. I'm excited to see where the storyline goes from here, because I was kind of worried that this would just be a mini series. We just get the six issues and that'd be it. But uh, according to the solicit, this actually is going to set up the next story arc. And I'm excited to see what direction it's going after that. So cover price on this is $3.99. And I'm having a little bit of trouble. So that's the cover A. And, you know, I'm already down for cover A's and I don't like to break up. You know, if I'm going to get cover A on one part, I'm gonna, probably going to get cover A for the whole series. But DC's also got the Black History Month variants, which I already signed up to grab each of those separately. So Black History Month variant by Nick Draper Ivy, friend of the channel. I'm down for that. But. There's also another variant cover. The cover B for this issue is by Raza, who does this really cool, like, uh, 3D art. Um, usually I'm not a fan of like the 3D art because it looks too video game me, but that's the best I've seen John Stewart's fade look like ever. And that's why I want that cover as well. So three covers to choose from. I'm definitely buying one of them for sure, but I may end up with all three and that's crazy, but. $3.99 is a cover price. <laughs> Next up on the pull list is Nightwing, issue 111. Now, I keep, I've keep i fallen behind on Nightwing. I need to get back caught up. I think the last issue I read was 108. So not too far behind, but far enough behind. Um, but I just saw an announcement from Tom Taylor that starting with issue, I didn't write it down, but basically there's like a sort of the, the days of Tom Taylor on Nightwing are numbered. We'll put it at that. We'll leave it at that. So this run's coming to an end. I think it's got about 10 issues left before Tom Taylor says uh, sayonara. 
So that's more incentive to get caught up or less. If you just want to save her Tom Taylor on the title for a little bit longer, put off your reading, delay the inevitable, if you will. That tends to be my MO. But Nightwing issue 111. It's got a cover price of $4.99. I really love this cover, A. Eh? So that's what I'm getting. And next book on the poll list is Superman issue 11. Almost at 111. Superman issue 11 is out this week. Uh, we had a, a little like uh, sort of one off story with Superman, like being like all out Western cowboy type thing. Now we're back in the regular timeline, regular story where Lex Luthor, you know, tried to be a crime fighter at one point and used methods that maybe aren't the most morally sound and now his old days are coming back to bite him there are a lot of you know former criminals who want revenge on lex and superman's got to be the one to step in and say yo chill out you can't take revenge on lex because i still can't let you be a criminal even as he's a criminal or was a criminal is reforming but is not quite reforming i don't know how we gonna call this right that's what the series has been about through the last 10 issues or nine, if you don't count that issue 10. So I've really enjoyed that interplay in the relationship between Lex and Superman. And that's why Superman has been one of my favorite books at DC. But hey, issue 11 is out this week with a cover price of $4.99. I'm grabbing cover A. And the last book on the DC Comics poll list for me this week is Wonder Woman. Issue number six, Wonder Woman by Tom King and Daniel Samper has been an amazing book. It's my first ongoing Wonder Woman comic. I've never read a Wonder Woman story before this. And while this did start out like super, like sort of hyper political, I feel like we sort of have finally gotten into the, the, the comic bookiness of it all, especially with issue five. Really, really dope. I've enjoyed it. Um, I've enjoyed it all the way through, if I'm honest with you. But um, basically, we've got the sovereign is operating behind the scenes, trying to like get all sorts of sentiments against Wonder Woman. We saw that uh, once the president made a speech, now the president is against Wonder Woman too. So like the whole of the US is against Wonder Woman. And we know there is a battle brewing. And on the other side of that, uh, the CIA or Basically, the government has been out there trying to convince a bunch of of Wonder Woman's uh, villains, past and present, basically the, the her whole rogues gallery to help them out and help destroy her. Uh, and in the last issue, we saw uh, Wonder Woman trying to convince all of her allies, you know, Donna Troy and Yara Floor and Cassie, Wonder Girl. Almost forgot you, Wonder Girl. But anyway, uh, trying to convince them to stay home, sit on the sidelines, let her fight her battle. And, uh, well, you know, they can't do that. So we're going to get an all out war. Wonder Woman and, you know, Team Wonder Woman, if you will, versus all the Wonder Woman Rose Gallery. This should be a really, really great issue to end the first story arc. So cover price on Wonder Woman issue number six uh, is four ninety nine. And once again, that's cover A, but I already pre-ordered all the Black History Month variants. So this image of Nubia by Nicholas Draper Ivy is going to come home with me as well. The way I've worked it out is these Black History Month variants are separate. They're a separate splurge. I'm probably still buying cover A as well. So there you go. That's it for the DC Comics on the poll list. And as long as I stick to the list, those are going to cost me $24 this week. Definitely the heaviest in my publisher totals. But now let's skip on over to the indies where finally we're getting the long awaited finale of Firepower. Firepower issue 30, uh, written by Robert Kirkman, art by Chris Samney. I really have loved this series. The, uh, the delays, honestly, have sort of ruined the second half of it for me. Ruined is a strong word. My point is it's sort of taking the wind out of the series sales, you know, we had a really big gap between issues like 23 and 24. And then we've had another between issue 29 and issue 30. But this is the finale. They're going to have to find a way to slay this dragon. There's a few loose ends that I assume are going to wrap up a certain way. But um, hey, we got to see it play out. So issue 30 is out this week with a cover price of $5.99. It's a lot for a series finale. But yeah, I guess it's a series finale. I'm grabbing cover A. 
And the next book on the uh, uh, indie pull list, uh, speaking of Robert Kirkman, is The Walking Dead Deluxe, issue 83. And you already know why. Now, just in case you maybe you read The Walking Dead and you didn't like all the standing around talking, it's a little bit. It's a lot better in Firepower. So just in case you have not read Firepower issue, uh, I mean, the the first 15 issues are collected in a um, oversized hardcover. You can pre-order that or order that. It's available now. And you can pre-order the second volume, which will contain the last 15 issues. So you can have all that in two hardcovers. And if you're worried that it's just going to be like a bunch of standing around talking, nah, Chris Samney's art is amazing. It's super kinetic. The story is re- paced really well. There's not a lot of like overwriting in this book, uh, but that's another pitch for firepower, which we already talked about. Let's talk back about The Walking Dead Deluxe. It's The Walking Dead in color, and I buy it twice a month because it's The Walking Dead in color, and it's the only way you can own it. So issue 83 out this week with a cover price of $3.99, grabbing cover A by David Finch, and the last book on the indie comics poll list and my poll list in general this week is Zorro, Man of the Dead, issue number two, written and drawn by Sean Gordon Murphy. It's a Zorro book written and drawn by Sean Gordon Murphy. And that's why I bought it. I didn't even read issue one yet, but I missed out on the Kickstarter for the hardcover. So that's the only way for me to own the story. So I'm going to own it like this. Cover price on this is $4.99. I'm grabbing cover A. And that's it for the indie comics on the pull list. Those are going to cost me $15 this week, which brings my grand total before taxes and my subscriber discount over at my LCS to $53, which tells you that I'm $3 over budget, which I like to stay at my budget or below my budget of $50 any given week. And February has been a little bit more loaded than I expected. So that's difficult. Once you add all the Black History Month variants and stuff. I'm way over budget. So eh, is what it is. Let's talk about some other books that might maybe should be on your radar, though. Uh, A few cool books coming out this week. First up is The Six Fingers, issue number one, written by Dan Waters with art by Sumit Kumar. Uh, If you read The One Hand, number one, last week or two weeks ago by Ram V. This series is like the sister series of that. Uh, this is their two series that are one. You can read one series or the other. You'd probably be missing a little bit of details, um, but one tells a complete story. The other series tells a complete story. And their hope is that if you read them together, you can even form like a third narrative in your head. really like that concept. The uh, the one hand was a really cool detective story. Uh, the six fingers is a story. It's the same story, but it's from the perspective of the criminal that's being chased. There seems to be a supernatural element to it. I don't want to spoil. Plus, I've never read it. So I guess I can't really spoil it. The reason it's on the radar and not an actual book on my pull list. My LCS didn't order issue one of the other series. So I grabbed it digitally. I'm probably going to wait for some sort of hardcover collection of this series to buy it all. But who knows? I may end up buying it on Comixology anyway. Cover price on this is $3.99. That's cover A. Next up, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles source book. Uh, issue number one of four is out this week. This is a sort of recapping the major events of the IDW Turtles uh, before their series ends and relaunches with number one. Uh, later this year. As far as I understand, the relaunch is still in the same continuity. It's a renumbering, but it's in the same canon. So that source book is probably going to be helpful to you to understand just how the IDW timelines and everything works, uh, sort of who's who, but it's not really new stories. And at a price of $7.99, it's a kind of, it's kind of an expensive affair to have. I had pre-ordered issue one, but I think I'm going to cancel my pre-order because they've already announced they're going to collect all issues one through four of the source book into its own oversized hardcover that will fit in with the IDW Ultimate Collection hardcovers. So that's probably the best way for me to own that as opposed to spending $32 for four single issues that I'm never going to open after the first time. So there's that. And the next book that's on the radar this week is Spawn issue 350. I'm not investing in Spawn anymore. It's always great art and an okay story. I haven't been following it for the last 30-ish issues or so, so I have no idea what's going on. But 
Todd McFarlane's excited about it. So excited, in fact, that there's a million covers, including a one per store signed by Todd McFarlane variant. So if Spawn is your jam, Spawn's your thing. If you're a lapsed Spawn reader, it's probably a great time to come back to the title. Not for me, though. Spawn 350 out this week. Cover price on it is $4.99. And that was cover A. My favorite is probably the Stegman variant or the Jonathan Glapion variant. Just for the record, but I'm not going to buy it. Those are all the books on the radar this week. Let me know what you are most excited about as coming out or, you know, really new cool announcements like freaking Marvel DC crossovers. That is wild to me that those are available for pre-order and you can use a link down below. And that wasn't really a plug, but I might as well plug since I'm talking about it. Right. Also, uh, we are really, really close to our 10,000 subscriber milestone. Once we uh, hit that milestone, I get to open this special package from uh, channel mod Buckmaster B and I get to plan a giveaway special for you guys as well. So tell your friends, tell like 50 of your friends to subscribe to the channel. And then we can have a party. Huge thanks to the channel family for making all this possible. I will see you all in another video real soon. Until then, stay safe. Stay awesome and uh, read something dope today. Peace.